So we're gonna see how much that grew in just three weeks from when you saw me put $10 worth of soil in and a bunch of leaves to now. Looking good. This is the trough that I set up. I had different plans, you know that, and then things happened and now I went with tomatoes, but you know what? The plants are looking good, but there is an issue. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm gonna talk about my trough that I set up. And what I did was I, planted a yellow tomato, a sun gold, and a cherry. I think the uh, cherry's here, sun gold's there, or whatever. But anyways, there they are, independently in their own pots, but massive holes so they can send their roots all the way down. So what have I got here? I put a pepper in here, and I guess there's a little tomato over there, but the main thing is those three tomatoes. Now, I may or may not have an issue. They're growing beautifully. They've got flowers coming through, and I thought I saw tomatoes the other day, and then they disappeared, I think. Could have sworn I saw them. So what I'm gonna do, oh, maybe soon, the next few days, is I'm going to wrap it. Now, I've got too many things around here. See, there's a lot going on. I've got all this foliage growing all through here, and what happens is I've got a jungle. Just a jungle growing all over around my trough, which is actually a bad thing. If I wanted to make sure I don't lose anything, you would take your trough or take your raised bed and have it out in the open where there would be space all the way around. And we've got a lot going on. You know, we had this thing built. We were building that and then we're still cleaning up around here. So we have a haven for critters. I've seen squirrels around here and they sometimes, not always, will pull off green tomatoes. So what I'm going to have to do, oh, hopefully in the next... Well, I don't know. I'm trying, I've got like 10 million things I'm trying to do is I need to trim it back and string up a few more of the tomatoes uh, plants that are hanging over and make it open. So it's kind of its own island. That's when you save most of your plants. And instead of tooling the whole thing, what I'm going to do is put a skirt around it. So I'm literally just going to tie tool around the bottom. I could do it all like that big if I wanted to, but I'm going to wrap some tool. And what that will do, and let me tell you something, it works here, and tool is T-U-L-L-E. If something tries to jump in there, because right now a squirrel or even a rat could jump into that tote, sit on the edge and jump in. I've made it way too easy for them to get in. And then look, they've got camouflage. They, they're completely covered and no hawks or anything will get them. But with the tool around it, if they jump in, the tool doesn't hurt them, but they've got tiny little nails and their nails are going to grab onto the tool and then they get stuck and they have to sit there. I've seen it and kind of pull their nails out. Well, while they're doing that, they're open for predators. Here's what I did here. There's a good example. I wrapped some tool around Tommy. This is Tommy the tomato. Now, this is why sometimes volunteers are not that good. Tommy throws a lot of beautiful flowers, but no tomatoes. I don't know anything about Tommy the tomato. You probably saw that video where it was growing in the ground and a mole ate all the roots off. I rerooted it and planted in here. So it's growing into a really nice plant, but so far no tomatoes, but I haven't given up on Tommy. Well, if I do the same thing, very simple, can put it on with clips, I can put it on with irrigation tubing, I could just wrap it. See, nothing has bothered this tomato plant at all. Nothing at all. Nothing's chewed on it, nothing's come to it because they can't climb in there. As Soon as they climb on here, and if their nails get stuck, they have to sit there for a minute and pull their nails out. In the meantime, a hawk could be flying by and saying, ooh, well, at least this is what they could think, and grab them so they don't wanna mess with tool. That keeps out rabbits, it keeps out all the critters. That will not keep out hornworms, in other words, the butterflies or the moths that would come on there. It won't keep out birds, but birds, a lot of birds, not all birds, do not want to land on tomato plants because of the trichomes, which is those little, see the little hairs on there? Those are sticky and you can't wash it off. It's like a tar. So even if they go to a bird bath and scrub and scrub, it's really hard to get off. So if I ended up with hornworms, I should put some tree branches in here. And then the, uh, the uh, Orioles can come land on the tree branches, and then eat the hornworms off. They can land on the wire. They're really good at maneuvering around. So there's a lot of things we can do to get rid of pests. But right now, this is set up for pests, all kinds of pests. So I'm going to get some tool around that, and then we'll trim it back really good, and we'll see how that goes. Because the flowers look good. 
I don't see any problems with the flowers, but I did believe I saw some tomatoes. Oh, see, there's tomatoes. See if we can get in here, right here, see? I think there was tomatoes. Oh, there's more tomatoes here. Okay, and there's more tomatoes there. All right, I'm gonna have to get tool wrapped around there. I'll leave my onions. I have to start picking these off or I'll lose them. These are walking onions. They do not produce seeds. They throw little onions, baby onions. Think of guppy fish. Guppies don't have eggs, they produce babies. Well, walking onions produce baby onions and then just stick them in the ground. So I'll have to trim those off and get the onions growing. I don't wanna lose them. Kind of clear off a little bit back here, make it a little bit open, just a little bit more, and then get some tool around it. Now I could wrap tool quite high. I could even put it onto the plants, wrap it around and leave the top open if I want. So I'm gonna do that and we'll see what it looks like. And then hopefully we'll get some tomatoes pretty soon because I think this is really cool. And then next spring, I'm gonna set this up differently. Let me step back for a minute. This was unplanned. And had I known I was gonna have this put in and Gary and I step back and say, hey, let's make a shelter because it, the sun, this is south facing and the sun just beats into the house really hard. That now in the fall when it's hot, I won't have the sun coming in the sliding glass doors here. I would not have put the trough here. I would have set it up differently. So this was open. So I may or may not move it later on in the year or early next year. I'll have to see how this goes. But I've got my lemon verbena and then I've got all the dragon fruit. It literally is a jungle and it would have been thought out differently. But this thing would weigh a ton with all the leaves and everything. There's only what one bag of soil in here. And I don't want to disturb it because it looks good. So we'll see if we can clean it up. And maybe, maybe I'll just end up clearing a little bit because I'm going to turn this part into a bird garden as well. But look real quick, even though we're not doing it on that. Look, look, look. I don't know if you can see, we've got tons all over the place of dragon fruit starting to develop fruit. And we've got flowers now. So look on the bottom. And that's the other issue. I've got to trim a lot of this back because look back here. I can't walk back there anymore. It's all dragon fruit. Let me tell you something. They bite. They got spikes. So I've got to be careful with that. All right. So let me get some tool around here and let's see if we can save these tomatoes and make it, let's say, critter proof. And let me tell you, tool works wonderful. So what I'm going to do here is use pink tool. Normally I use green, but I figured if I use the pink, then you'll be able to see it. And I do have links in the description of where I get mine, which is really cheap the green kind of disappears. As you can see around Tommy the tomato in the back, you can barely see it on the green bucket back there. But usually we use the pink, or Gary likes using it, to put around different vegetables and fruits that are growing so he can spot them and the critters won't touch them, including insects. But I'm gonna go ahead and use pink so you can see. So I am not gonna unfold this. Now keep in mind, when you use tool, you're gonna to use this over and over. When I take this down later, maybe in the next, I don't know, four to six months, I'm gonna use this next year, if not someplace else right away. Now, let me tell you on my trough, to me, this is just nothing with tomatoes. You've got to check out my daughter's video. I will definitely put the link, you can see it. It might be underneath where you touch the title of this video and then you'll see more. So you touch more and more and then you'll be able to see the different links I put up. I'll also put it in different places and maybe even in the comments because her trough that she set up, the same exact one that we got her, is amazing. She's got watermelon that must be 20 feet long. Go check it out. Now I can go back and clean it up a little bit, but see if anything tries to jump in here, they're gonna get their nails caught and then they're just open to the skies and they don't like that. So all I did was simply clip it because remember, we're gonna go into winter and then the tomato plants probably won't do well. So it's nothing permanent. Normally I do this in green, but I did it in a kind of a pinky color. That's the color, so you can see it. And it's just wrapped around. So the whole base of the plant now is closed to critters, but I could still have, uh oh, see? I can still have this come in and that will be taken care of by the Orioles and the birds that come in because they can still come in here and I better get some twigs in here so they will come in and look for that. But now, no rats, no squirrels, they won't bother with that. They still could jump, but the moment they try to jump in here and get out because they'll have to climb through this, normally they leave. Nothing's 100%, but I will tell you, 
I'm going to call this 90%. So I hope I've given you some ideas on how to protect some of your plants. We'll see later on as the months go on what's going to happen in the next month or so. And I think now, if there's any tomatoes, I should be able to save them. And with the irrigation tubing, this was really simple. I could have done it better. Here is yarn and it holds everything up. I've been just stringing back and forth to hold it up as it gets taller and taller. And then if I want, if I don't want it to get any taller than that, I can trim it later. So I got this stick. This is just an old collard branch and I'm going to stick it in down in the soil where it's not gonna hurt any plants. Just kinda, if I can find a place to put it where it's out of the way, but it can hang in here. might get a better stick later. This way an Oriole can come in and land on this and they'll look around, they can spot anything and then they, they can get the caterpillars because they a lot of times will not want to land on tomatoes. Once they know what tomato plants are and they get all sticky, they stop. Now, like I said, they can hang on the irrigation tubing, tomato stakes they can hang on, but this way I'll give them some branches so they can do my protective work on my plants. See here, I even went back and instead of attaching it to the tubing, I attached it to the yarn and I kind of pulled these plants out a little bit, give them a little bit more room. Because all I'm trying to do is stop critters from coming from the bottom up and that should do the job. I'm not trying to stop insects or birds, but I'm trying to stop rodents. If I was going to do insects and birds, I would just cover the whole thing at that point and that would be easy enough to do. So with that, have a wonderful day. You got to see me work in my garden a little bit and get my tomatoes covered and protected from not the birds. I'm not really worried too much about the birds, but I am worried about rodents pulling off my tomatoes because I can pick them as soon as they start to turn red if I'm worried about critters. I don't want to pick them before they start to turn because they always taste better if you wait till they're just starting to ripen. Ripen tomatoes on the plant taste fabulous, but if you have to get them off a little early, as soon as they blush, go ahead and pick them, put them in a box, put them on the windowsill. They'll continue to ripen and you'll have pretty much fine ripened tomatoes. With that, have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Hey, any of you Orioles? I've got something for you. Well, they'll find it. Isn't that something? They're so hard to see. Look at that. That's like, I think the third one now on the property I have seen. Here comes the cabbage white. No, nothing for me. Bye-bye. I have a correction to make. I didn't come back here. Tommy does have a tomato. <laughs> okay, we have to pay more attention. <laughs>